Chance and Morgan are two roller coaster manufacturers that are closely linked together. From 1995 to 2001, Morgan Manufacturing sold nine different roller coasters, primarily hyper coasters. When Dana Morgan retired in 2001, his company's assets were sold to Chance Rides, who previously had made some smaller coasters such as Junior Coasters and the infamous Toboggan model. And for a few years, the company was known as Chance Morgan. Now, that company goes by just Chance Rides once again. While they haven't built too many roller coasters, their newer ones show real promise. So in this video, I will rank the top 10 roller coasters by both these manufacturers. Before starting the list, I want to note that I have separate reviews already published for all but two of these rides. I also want to give an honorable mention to Quicksilver Express at Gilroy Gardens. This was the first coaster Morgan ever manufactured, but it wasn't actually installed until the turn of the millennium. This ride tracks much better than most Aero Mine trains, and it has a nice use of the terrain. It just barely missed this list. Number 10. Santa Monica West Coaster at Pacific Park. This iconic coaster is recognized by many because of its location on the Santa Monica Pier. This ride offers stunning views of the beach, ocean, and park it's located in. Most of the layout is mild, but if you ride in the back car, there is some airtime to be had. The largest drop has some great floater airtime, and the hump afterwards gives it another tiny pop. Number 9. Nickelodeon Slime Streak at Nickelodeon Universe this Chance Family Coaster offers a fun, rowdy aerial tour of this indoor park. The first and third drops offer some nice laterals and a smidge of airtime. The rest of the layout feels sort of like a bucking bull crossed with a monorail. No other airtime or notable forces, but the constant movement keeps the ride engaging. And it's the smoothest coaster at this park by far. Just watch out if you're tall. These are some of the most cramped vehicles out there. Number 8. Wild Thing at Valley Fair. The original Morgan Hyper Coaster is weak for the genre. The first drop gives nice floater airtime in the back, and then the second hill is one of the most sustained airtime moments in the world. It offers roughly 5 straight seconds of floater airtime. You then have a long and fun turnaround, but the second half is where the ride falters. You have a series of bunny hills that should give great airtime, but the mid-course trim spoils the finale. You slowly coast over each hill, mostly remaining in your seat. Number 7. Mamba at Worlds of Fun This one starts strong like the prior one. The outward leg has some solid and sustained floater airtime. The giant helix turnaround has decent power to it, plus a small kink giving some airtime. As for the return run, I need to preface this ranking by saying I did not ride Mamba in 2022. I heard it ran trimless and offered magnum level airtime in the return run. When I last rode it in 2020, the ride was trimmed mightily for the finale, so those final hills were duds. With how it's running today, the coaster likely would crack the top 5. Number 6. Steel Force at Dorney Park Unlike the prior two Cedar Fair Hypers, this one has always run its full potential. The outward leg is nearly identical to Mamba, and that's a good thing. I'll never complain about sustained negative Gs. The turnaround section is fast and full of head choppers. Then the return run has always delivered. The mid-course does not hit too hard, so every bunny hill delivers floater and or flejector airtime. That is especially true because the lap bars give a lot of room even on the lowest setting. Number 5. Steel Eel at SeaWorld San Antonio This mini hyper has some borderline painful airtime. You have the same roomy restraints as Steel Force, and the airtime is even more sustained, so you come down hard in the valleys. I know that's not for everyone, but I will take that for the level of airtime this ride delivers. Sometimes, the ride trims lightly, so the return run gives good floater airtime the whole way back. This placement reflects that mode. Sometimes the ride trims harshly in the return run, which makes it weak. When it runs like that, it would slide in behind steel force. Number 4. Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom. This Chance Hyper GTX feels like a mini RMC with its powerful ejector airtime and pacing. This coaster rips through the layout, never missing a chance to launch riders skywards. That's best seen in the finale, which is some of the most aggressive ejector pops of any coaster. There are two things holding it back from the top three. One, it just does have the same sense of speed as the coasters ahead of it. Two, the restraints are far tighter. 
The ride is still smooth though. Number 3. Steel Dragon 2000 Nagashima Spa Land This gigantic giga coaster is the world's longest coaster. The elements feel like those on Steel Force just scaled way up. The outward leg has fantastic sustained airtime because of how massive those hills are. The turnaround section has some speedy turns, albeit lacking on the force. Then the return run is a never-ending series of bunny hills with really strong floater airtime. This ride has the potential of place in the second spot, but there are a few things holding it back. 1. The first few valleys have some bad jackhammering in many rows. 2. And related to that item, you cannot pick your row, so you cannot guarantee one of the premium seats on the ends of the train where the airtime is at its best. 3. You have B&M trains. They are comfortable, but the clamshell harness is more restrictive than the usual Morgan lap bars. Number 2. Superman El Ultimo Escape at Six Flags Mexico This is Morgan's best ground-up hypercoaster. The pre-lift occurs on a hillside and gives some surprise pops of airtime before the main layout. After a long lift hill, you have a more forceful layout than usual. The first drop has lots of sustained floater, but the turnaround section is unhinged. You have a helix with strong laterals, plus some hills with some really aggressive airtime. Then the return run, if untrimmed, has some really nice floater airtime. And all these great elements are paired with spectacular views of Mexico City. And coming in at number one is Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. This ride originally opened as an arrow looping coaster known as Steel Phantom. Due to complaints about roughness, Morgan transformed this coaster into Phantom's Revenge. The first two drops remained, including the legendary second drop down the ravine. That drop is world class between its airtime, length, and views. The rest of the layout receive a series of fast turns and intense little airtime hills. Every bunny hill delivers incredible ejector airtime. That would be the case with any restraint, but it is extra special with those roomy lap bars. I cannot believe how minimal this restraint is for airtime this powerful. Then that is paired with some strong positive G's on a few valleys and a large turnaround as well. This ride is a high speed powerhouse. So those are the top 10 roller coasters from Morgan and Chance. I really hope the latter gets a chance to build more Hyper GTXs in the future, because that model has a lot of potential. So I am definitely excited to see how Hot Wheels turns out at Mattel Adventure Park in Arizona, which is expected to have a launch in multiple inversions. It should open later this year at some point. What is your favorite coaster from either manufacturer? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.